Hey everybody, Ernie Hatmaker here on a very bright and hot whew, um, first week of June. Like, no kidding, it's not even 7 o'clock a.m. So, let's see what's going on in the garden. a lot of green out there all of it's not weeds this time <laughs> so in this box you can see now that this sunflower is topping um, the little stake that I put in there to keep him straight so I probably need to loosen from it um, I've just got him barely on by um, a couple of zip ties they're really loose so he can grow and kind of push them up as he grows and these two on this side were planted after it and you can tell uh, because they're both the same height um, I still don't know if they're American Giants or if they're Russians or, or what um, but they are all giant sunflowers in this particular bed uh, you can see the, the warping that the heat and the rain have done um, there's um, Crowder peas in here basically just giving it um, a bunch of uh, extra nitrogen you know how legumes dump nitrogen I've only got a couple of strands of barley in there and there's all kinds of little weeds that are, have managed to pop in there some kind of way most of this is going to be okra throughout the summer um, I've got some okra started at various ages in this bed these are supposed to be teddy bear sunflowers and I put a couple of uh, I think those are Ford hook zucchini in there and then more teddy bear sunflowers on that side right now uh, the zucchini is pretty shaded most of the day um, okay so this palette section where these three are um, the last few years there have been beans over on the far end this time I've only got a um, six holes full of uh, bush beans and there's three in each one a couple of them didn't make it so I pulled them and there's a sunflower there just to, to um, kind of help them toward the end of uh, the day as the summer progresses but anyway the okra um, some of this is from Paragon Ridge Ranch and it's red okra and some of it is just regular clems and spineless and I did not label them because I figure I'd be able to tell once they started growing so yeah most of this is okra and then there's a little kale there in case the grasshoppers come over and maybe they'll take that and i can uh you know hopefully uh catch them before they go too far these are cantaloupe the german queen sunflower is doing okay um there is oh there's a wasp that's uh trying to get after my little wolf spider see the spider running that spider never runs that spider is running because there's one of the there's a shadow going over the other side that wasp is trying to get in there and that spider is spooked it's not spooked by me i've come here a million times if you don't see the wasp she's over here by my foot now but yeah i'd hate to see something happen to my little spider he's been protecting my um carnations these carnations man look at it run spider run this is sunflower row and um the ones here in the middle were planted before the rest and i did that so if i lost some i didn't lose them all i had to start all of them in peat pellets to make sure you know nothing got dug up because i didn't have my ultrasonic uh detectors or detectors <laughs> repellents before um, I planted sunflower row some of them are opening you can see that somebody took a big chomp out of that leaf um, and they're June beetles and the BT is working I've seen several dead June beetles all laying out here 
Um, this is the rest of Sunflower Row, and I'm just going to kind of go at an angle and a, a little arc, mainly because I haven't finished weeding all of this back here by those strawberries that aren't supposed to be in there. <laughs> I moved this, uh, I think it's a bell pepper. I moved this pepper plant because it, um, it, you know, has a hole in the side of the bucket for drainage and it's basically was watering the weeds and so I moved it over here to Sunflower Row where um, that evil can be uh, recycled <laughs> for a greater purpose. I still have all of this to kind of pull, which I don't want to use a weed eater and spread all this seed everywhere. So I'm, I'm hand pulling slowly to get it all to look like this. It takes a while. Okay, so over here, these are volunteer sunflowers from last year's sunflowers that were over here. So I'm thinking there's going to be some lemon pixies um, and some autumn something autumn queens i think is what they are oh look there's another one coming up right there um and they were just left over here after the peas there's a dandelion that i did not plant probably came in with the wildflower mix um yeah um i'm not happy with it but i'm not going to do anything about it uh, i'll try to catch it before it goes to to seed Wish me luck on that one. Another volunteer sunflower. But yeah, look at all these dandelions. They're just here. And I don't know how they got here either. Um, anyway, there's a sunflower that I planted at the edge of some of the uh, green zucchini. And then I've got another little section of, of zucchini that's outside of the Roma bed. These Roma tomatoes are uh, fighting the odds out here. And they're growing. They're definitely growing uh, some maters. A lot of them, uh, especially these larger ones here, have romas on them already. Um, the rest are making flowers. I've got a few in buckets, and I put them in buckets on purpose so that um, whoever doesn't make it, <laughs> you know, the other ones will have a chance, and I don't know at this point who's going to make it. And then I'm going to walk you over here. Um, a lot of my African daisies are now uh, all just going to seeds. The, the petals are falling off. And I'm throwing some of them into the pallets over here where they should have been, along with those back there. Um, this sunflower here I also planted um, to shade all of this stuff, which it's starting to cast shade now. And then that, I guess it's a gourd... Um, or some kind of summer squash. I'm assuming it's a gourd because I had gourds over here where all of these volunteers have popped up. Yeah, that's definitely a gourd with that white flower. It might be a loofah gourd. I don't know. I hope it is. There's another one. And it's headed straight for my peas, which I hope the peas hit that fence before they do. <laughs> so back here, um, is a cabbage actually it's two cabbages with a grass spider or something on it these don't get watered as often as they should and they're still surviving some kind of way so i'm leaving them alone those are the volunteer um mustard greens um there might have been some georgia collards in there i don't know the cucumbers they have taken off. Um, I'm having to catch them every day. They send runners out. And this one actually is long enough. I could probably throw it up. But I'm not going to. Because um, I don't feel like having wet hands all over my phone. And then these two Beefmaster tomatoes. 
one is growing faster than the other and i think it's got something to do with the cucumbers i don't know why they were planted at the same time they're watered at the same time um it could also be because there's more weeds on this side i've been doing my best to pull weeds around them but you know when you're just one person and the weeds are like a million you literally are fighting every day <laughs> just to get just to get where you were the day before that aramanth is is doing good out out here with uh, this kale which is going to seed and i don't need any extra kale seed so i'm actually gonna um be yanking those soon uh once it goes to seed i don't really like the flavor if you notice i've got to clean my little uh electronic solar zapper um it kind of rained last night and i guess the bugs were wet when they landed so they're not all falling into the tray like they should you know the last time that it cleaned that for me though he got a little shock like whoopsie hosta this was where i had planted them when i first uh, started planting hostas i moved them to the pallet over there except for that one came up after i moved everything so i left it um this sunflower um is doing its best in the middle of the day to shade this pepper so during the morning time so far this is the um cubanelle pepper and um it's actually given me a couple of babies it's got some more on there look at that there's a few on there now this is my columbine flower um columbine is definitely um part one for me and i have to fight to keep the vines out of that these little uh flowers are coming up and i don't remember what they are right now um yeah they're coming up with a lot of weeds in front of them <laughs> i would say i planted the weeds on purpose but if you can see all of that and you can see the sunflowers mixed in and where the shade is the sunflowers are doing their job like right now they're definitely doing their jobs this kale makes me hungry when i look at it but i want it to get a little bit bigger because i think the leaves are supposed to be um like two or three feet long i don't know it you know the pictures kind of lie sometimes on the seed packets look at that black eyed susan's coming through more kale um zinnias are popping up everywhere marigolds i still don't know what kind of tomato that is this is um, a dwarf blue cornflower, and I wanted to make sure this one would, would live in the soil pH before I planted the others. And then there's more kale around that, more uh, black eyed Susans. More cabbage. Volunteer zinnias. <laughs> I mean, I'm not stopping the flowers from popping up because honestly, they should have already come up. And right now, I don't remember what kind of flower these are. I'm probably uh, going to be surprised because some of these flowers really did just kind of go where they wanted to um, or didn't come up when I planted them and came up the next year. I guess they had to be cold stratified. Um, this lettuce, I told you I was going to be pulling ahead of lettuce and I haven't pulled it yet. I really want to. Um, there's a really tight ball in each one of those um and then the leaves are just kind of like wavy around them i felt them this morning when i watered them speaking of watering um that sunflower has seen better days <laughs> um my nasturtium has not come up yet but i planted in this little hole here um i've got a, a couple chard here and there some more uh, zinnia which uh, i know what kind i planted like by by the seed packet which i still have um this uh carolina reaper is you know it's there it's got little buds on it but it has not produced flowers then this basil it looks just sharp sharp basil i love the way it looks all right african daisies we 
at the cattle panels. You guys see that butternut squash right there? It's almost to the top now. No thanks to, you know, <laughs> it because it sure isn't trying to help me at all. It's not trying to help at all. Look at this. Look at this. I just wove that through like two days ago. Look at all those little weird knots. <laughs> it's like, I want to go. No, I don't. I want to go. No, I don't. Not without me. If you remember my video, that's one of the uh, the fruit on this butternut that I um, hand pollinated. I won't say the other word. That seemed to offend some people. Um, I'm going to have to do some more because, like I said, I mean, I woke the bee up this morning. The one bumblebee that, you know, stays around here all the time. Um, he was in the comfrey again. He slept there last night. So I'm going to have to do all this by hand if I want to get it done. Um, butternut, which makes me think that that one is a patty pan. Did I mix patty pan squash? I just thought about that. What if I mix patty pan squash with my butternut? Boy, that's going to be a weird tasting uh, seed combination. Uh, these are, um, uh, what kind of cherry tomato are these? I don't remember right now. You guys, I, I'm kind of, you know, crazy. <laughs> um, I've got a label in there somewhere, but that requires sticking my hand in there, and I care more about my phone than I do the label at this moment. Um, that jalapeno over there is just loving being out here instead of on the porch. Oh, you guys. Since they can't be on the squash, look, there's a squash bug on my beans. Look at him. Who does he think he is? That's a squash bug. It looks like a roach with stripes on it. That's a squash bug. Anyway, uh, these are... Uh, Thai purple pod beans. These are, um, I think, a regular white, uh, uh, al uh, not alfalfa bean, asparagus bean. Um, I've got some runner beans on the ground and some other kind of a Kentucky Wonder pole beans. There's a green um, zucchini. Look at these French dressing radishes, though. Look how big they are. Not exaggerating. Now, there are some that are the normal size. That's because they're not getting fertilized as much as the ones in the middle. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. Ed has told me when I harvest these, make sure that I don't save him any. So, <laughs> I'm aiming to do that. Uh, this little sunflower here is in like some regular clay dirt. And it's not the same kind as the trench on Sunflower Row. Um, so he's taken a little bit longer getting in there. Some of this, uh, these radishes are starting to, to branch out. That means it's going to go to seed once it starts splitting the leaves like that. And I need to take them out before that because they don't, they, they get really spicy and weird tasting when they go to seed to me. This gold jubilee um, tomato has lots of little babies on it. Look at that. That should be like six or seven. Um, I don't know how big they're going to get. They should be a medium sized tomato. Yeah, they should be a medium size, but they're everywhere. Um, on this thing and that's with all the hornworm eggs which I'm really thinking that it's the the BT is definitely working um, because I've seen way more hornworm eggs than I can possibly pull off and they've even laid eggs on the fruit and I think they start eating and they just stop so if you notice I've got um, zucchini kind of planted throughout this area back here and I didn't have anything in this mulch uh, last season and um, I kind of put them out here because um, if there becomes a borer problem it's not as easy for those little critters to eat all one plant and crawl to the next 
but I'm also not planning on putting them out here next year. Um, so this next season is going to find me a little uh, respite from all that. Rotating definitely helps. Like I, I think I told you guys the other day when I had um, I'd seen this uh, vine borer over in the radishes. The radishes last year are one little click away from where all the squash was. Well, this year the radishes are where the squash was last year. And so um, some of the vine borer adults were climbing out. And they were in the squash, uh, not squash, the uh, radishes instead of in my squash. They couldn't find the squash before I could find them. And I'm hoping that um, rotating helps like that. It gives me an opportunity to save my cantaloupe. You all already saw those. I'm just going to go behind the compost for a second. So I can show you where the cucumbers were last year. I planted this sunflower and this uh, what they call a golden slicer tomato. And those leaves are curled and I don't understand it. I'm not over watering it. I'm not under watering it. Um, I've never had one of these before. The leaves are always heavy and droopy. So it's still kind of fresh to me what to do about this thing. Maybe I am under watering it. I don't know. It seems like when you water it, the leaves open. But then it seems like the leaves kind of turn that weird brown with the little dots on it that suggests it's too much water so I don't know um, I'm glad I've got another one I can kind of afford to mess up one of them these green zucchini that I put in um, the palette here um, will probably uh, make me regret putting them here because the last time that I put green zucchini in the palettes we had so many stink bugs and squash bugs and leaf hoppers and um, and they would hide all underneath the wood and there's another zucchini another zucchini and I'm out here to this this was supposed to be a potato um, bag um, it's one of those felt grow bags and it was supposed to be for potatoes um, I don't have potatoes in here um, I decided um, that I'm not going to do potatoes this year instead there's um a uh, marglobe tomato right there and then there are some crowder peas in there this red russian kale has finally grown to the top of this thing there's not enough for me to eat by itself here but i could mix it with uh, some greens or some of the other types of kale and then of course here's the other gourmet slicer and you can see some of these leaves are curled and some aren't but you can see how droopy and heavy this thing is I actually had to chop a lot of it back just so my beans could come out. And these are uh, scarlet runner beans on the, the ground here in between this and the, the pole beans that have started going up, up, up. This is a black cherry tomato and it is starting to put on babies. It's got little babies here and there. Um... The odd thing is I didn't see any flowers and yet I saw babies. Of course, now I see flowers now that I say I didn't see any. <laughs> and then, of course, you see underneath this arch, there's other uh, beans that are in buckets. I did not plant anything in the ground inside the arch this time. This is kind of what the arch looks like with all of this going on. Um, hopefully... Um, the climbing that the beans and tomatoes are doing will keep going. Um, maybe I won't need shade cloth if they go fast enough. They sure act like they're taking their time, though. Okay, so the tomatoes, you can see the Arkansas Travelers kind of running into the butternut. And I don't know if I showed you before that I actually have um, Arkansas Travelers mixed in to the butternut. And they're both doing fine. The butternut is being really weird. And it's like grabbing hold of the Arkansas Travelers. You know, it thinks it's going to choke them out. But then the Travelers are using the anchors that are being uh, set by these things. Look at that. He's reaching. 
Um, hopefully, um, tomorrow I'll, or maybe later on when it's a little, uh, I was going to say warmer out, no way. Uh, when it's a little cooler out, I'll grab this guy right here and put him to the trellis. Um, so I see that now they're already grabbing. This one on this side has come through and is grabbing that. Um, I'm not going to chop them though. I don't want to chop my uh, butternut. Not just yet anyway. Now if I see a, a, any sign of borer damage, then I'll, I'll have no choice but to do that. But right now I just want to fill up the trellis. All right, the greenhouse frame. Ed has put strings on it so we could do a French weave if we needed to to pull things up, which we only had to um, pull one uh, bean. Look at those weeds trying to climb up and get all up in there. Uh, but anyway, my little tomato in there is doing great. Move, B. My little tomato is uh, kind of pulling on out there, and it's a yellow pear tomato, and so they climb and climb and climb anyway. Um, and then these uh, pole beans, which there's a bunch of them, and I should have already thinned them out, starting to turn yellow because they can't see the the sun. I can't see the sun. Got my Spanish onions in there, starting to spread out a little bit. I've got to put more dirt in there once I see a uh, little progress. If you remember, my little pumpkins, pumpkins, can't see the other one really that well from this side. Let's see. There he is. You see a little bit of him anyway. I have forgotten what kind of bush this is supposed to be, but it's growing. <laughs> and, um, you see the peppermint forest has been toned down a lot. Um, you can actually see the thyme in there now. See the thyme. That's funny. This is a cayenne and aroma tomato. And they have graciously offered to hop into the same bucket so I can get a little salsa garden. This is a grasshopper who's probably going to die in the next few days. Because he's eating something that's got... BT all on it, chard and a, um, a five color hot pepper, at least he's on the chart and not the pepper, um, that's a jalapeno growing inside an azalea tub, my uh, nasturtium, some kind of jewel, might be a dwarf jewel or it might be uh, my um, Indian empress, I don't remember, um, and can't remember what kind of pepper this is either. Uh, the Buena Malata. It's got a little purple in it. This is a Shantaka ghost pepper that's finally popping out of there. And it came from um, UT33200. This is um, herbs and weeds. Um, I've got catnip and two types of sage. Um, I had basil, but I don't think there's any more uh, holy basil in there. And I got that from um, her healthy homestead. And the lemon thyme is back there along with my spearmint. And then this sunflower, I'm not going to... I don't even know why this stuff is in this green bucket, but I let it live because I saw it was growing. <laughs> Anyway, this sunflower um, has grown pretty fast here, and it is shading um, these four garden um, peach tomatoes, and I've got um, some other kind of little sunflowers. I don't remember what they are right now, but they're smaller, and um, in the other holes that have dirt in them, there's more, um, I don't know what kind of tomatoes those are. They might be garden peach also. Um, and then I've got zucchini down toward the end. They're kind of spread out. And my mullein. Um, and more uh, azaleas. I think that's an azalea too. Um, these are also azaleas. And then there are my Pilsarvesi, my Cherokee purple. And then another, um, I think that's an orange bell pepper that's in that 
um, third grade container. This apple tree flowered just like its parent tree across the street. So we're probably going to get a few apples if I can keep the worms out of them this year. Here is um, another apple tree. And I don't know if you can see this. The thing that clearly looks like an apple. <laughs> it's neat, huh? But there are apples all over it. Really, I mean, there's there's apples all over this tree here. See that one? And some of them are green and some are already red. The ones that are already red just, you know, look at those blossoms right there. See those pretty blossoms? Beautiful apple blossoms. And they haven't even opened yet. Um, more apples that are hiding. I probably need to start spraying um, a dormant oil of some kind. Um, maybe neem oil. Um, before it starts getting too hot and I miss my opportunity. Plum trees. They have plums on them. Um, not as many as the parent trees. I mean, these are just clones of the, the trees that are on the other property. Um, some of these plums have already turned red, so they're not going to be good for anything. Still working on that blackberry hedge. It's helping us out a lot, but I'd love to get the blackberries all the way down there, and I might have to help them by pulling up some of the ones that are popping up where they shouldn't and just planting them down on the end. I appreciate you joining me this morning. Have a good day.